How to interview a realtor? Hmm, it's a good question. And if you are interviewing a realtor, it probably means you're thinking about hiring one either to help you sell a home, buy a home, or both. So let's talk about what to look for in a good realtor and how to interview one to find somebody that's really going to be a good fit for your needs. This is Emily Cressy, your digitally enabled Puget Sound community advisor. Hi, this is Emily Cressy. I have been a real estate investor for the last 20 years and I am also a real estate broker here in the Seattle area. And a lot of people who are in the early phases of thinking about what to do with their home next are wondering how to interview a realtor so they can find someone who's going to do the job and do it well. So let's, let's talk about what differentiates realtors first of all. Uh, for the most part, everybody is licensed by the United States. Everyone has good social skills. Uh, most of us are trustworthy and uh, have great brokerage support. So there are a lot of things that realtors like to tout about their services that are not really differentiating factors. And that doesn't mean anything bad. I think a lot of realtors can do a good job for you. The question is what specifically are you looking for? What are the differentiating factors that are gonna help you say, yes, this is the person that I want to work with and I feel very comfortable and confident. So number one I would say is just personality type. Some people have a very specific personality and if it doesn't jibe with yours, it's not gonna be a good fit. So whether you're you know, artistic and musical, whether you're very analytical, whether you're like a grind them down business person or whether you want everyone to come out feeling happy with a win-win situation, those types of attitudes can influence whether or not uh, the realtor that you choose is one that's gonna work best for you. Now, it may be beneficial if you tend to be too soft, maybe you wanna go with someone that's a little bit harder to uh, balance you out, uh, you know, that's a possibility, but at the end of the day, if you don't feel comfortable, if you don't get along, then that's not gonna be the right person for you to work with. What I would say is a huge differentiating factor amongst realtors is what they are going to do to market your property. When it comes down to the things that sellers want, typically they want um, the sale to go through, they want the property to be sold quickly, and they want to get the best price for the property. Those are the three main things. If you have other differentiating factors, for example, if you're trying to buy a new home and you want someone who can be flexible with that. If you really want um, someone who's gonna preserve the home and keep it the way it is versus a developer who's gonna tear it down and build some townhomes there, that can influence your exit strategy. But some people are just looking at the bottom line and they want the best price. Price is a factor for some people. And I have been guilty of this in the past where I shopped based on price alone and I always went with what was the cheapest uh, you know, cut rate. Even when I first got my real estate license, I said, everybody will be like this. Um, so I'm gonna be that cut rate realtor. And I, I spent years working for a firm here in Seattle who discounts their real estate commissions. And I was surprised. What I found was that even though this folks would get in line to work with this type of broker, they were not always happy with the service. They would want more than what the service was providing. They would want someone to advise them, someone to talk with them and uh, sort of teach them the process, give them a good understanding of what was supposed to be happening, what the strategy was, and educate them. And they were just not finding this in the more just transaction related, you know, find the property you wanna buy, tell us what you wanna buy it for, we'll make an offer, we'll do the paperwork. The cut rate realtor is not for everyone. So uh, what I found, even though I was oriented toward that myself and I thought that would be the best for everyone, what I found was that the clients there, some of them liked it, but many of them wanted more service. So I changed now my real estate brokerage. I am a full service agent so that I can follow the model which I have observed more clients wanting which is to be educated, to have their hand held. When I meet with clients, we talk sometimes for an hour or two before we even go out to look at homes so that they can understand what the market is like right now, what financing they need to have in place, what's gonna happen when they start to look at homes. 
then I say, you know, let's look at 25 homes together before we even think about making an offer. So you could say, you know, do you want to be in Everett? Do you want to be in Bothell? Do you want to be in Linwood? Do you want to be in a duplex? Do you want to be in a townhouse? Like, let's look at a lot of things and get you educated. And what I find is that a lot of times what people start out thinking that they want, by the time we go through this process, they've identified a different set of criteria, whether it's a different price range, a different location, a different type of home. So a lot of times what you're looking for as a buyer will evolve over this process. Um, additionally, once we have started this process, we'll spend another couple of hours going through the paperwork. I don't want people to say like, you know, you got to sign it to find out what's in it. We're going to look at everything in advance so you understand, you know, what is your down payment like? What is your um, earnest money like? When is it at risk? When do you get it back? What are your contingencies? How should you handle inspections? All of those details that people wonder about, I want to put the information into your hands so that you know and that you understand. And when you get ready to write an offer, frequently it's in a rush. You know, we see something that day, they're reviewing offers the next day, we've got to make an offer, make it happen, get all of our ducks in a row very quickly. I would not like to be rushed, and so I don't want you to feel rushed when you're trying to make those decisions and sign the stack of paperwork, I want you to understand what you're signing, the strategy behind it, uh, what variables, you know, what contingencies you're willing to let go of and which ones are very important for you to keep. I want you to understand. I want you to be educated. I am taking the time with my clients. I am no longer that cut fee realtor that just says sign it and we'll send it. I say, you know, let's take as much time as it needs before, after, during, all throughout the process to make sure that you feel very confident in what you're doing. I don't want to make the decisions for you. I want to be an advisor. I want to give you the information that you need to make the best decisions for yourself. So that's my orientation toward fees and discounting and that type of a thing. I was going to talk about marketing though, and the marketing comes in much more uh, as a, a seller's agent when I'm representing a, a home for sale. And so a lot of people think realtors don't do anything. They just throw the home on the market, on the MLS, and they put a sign in the yard, and that's it. And frankly, that's very true for some realtors. <laughs> so you've got to ask them if they're going to do anything else. I studied economics in college. I was an honors graduate with an economics major. And we talked about things like supply and demand and uh, the, the idea of a perfect marketplace. And the idea with that is that everyone knows about your property. If there are buyers in the marketplace, they should know about your property, even if they're taking the week off from rapidly searching every day like a crack monkey to see what the new listings are. Sometimes that can be exhausting. Sometimes buyers get discouraged. So we go more above and beyond. We don't just list it on the MLS for it to be circulated out. We are very proactive in reaching out to who we think are the buyers in the marketplace. So with that, number one, I am always marketing for buyers. I have um, ads going all the time on Facebook and I'm on YouTube and I, I'm on my website. So I'm attracting buyers in and I am talking with them. I'm calling people. I'm always trying to develop my list of in-house buyers. So these are people that might or might not be searching on the MLS in any given day, but I can show you in my database, I have this many people looking for this type of a house in this area. So that is a built-in buyers list that I can go to directly to uh, potentially market your home for sale. Uh, we also do postcards and mailings to the neighbors because oftentimes birds of a feather flock together. If they're already living here, they may uh, want to buy more property here. They may know family members that want to move. I live right next door to my parents. My uh, sister lives 10 minutes away from me. So, you know, we recruit people into our area that we like, that we know. And it's just another way of getting your house in front of people, your neighbors who are not on the MLS, but who may very well know people who are interested in getting a home in your area. And then I think the secret sauce to what I do is uh, marketing online. So I am not just um, posting something on my personal Facebook page or my business Facebook page where it's gonna get five likes. I am blasting out your listing to lots and lots of people through paid advertising 
on Facebook and other social media platforms. And the reason behind that is because we can target people uh, who are maybe browsing, but I have actually seen cases where people have said, I wasn't even in the market for a place, I didn't know I wanted a home, but when I saw that ad for that home on Facebook, I knew I had to have it and I reached out and I ended up buying it. So this is getting in front of people who uh, may be planning to buy in the future or not actively looking, but if we can wake them up with your property, we're gonna do that. Um, number four, I'll say just what is the, what does it look like in terms of personal service? The number one complaint that people have about their real estate agents is that they're not getting enough communication. And frequently the communication is hot and heavy at the beginning and then it just sort of fades off. Like, oh, it's listed, there's nothing new. Because there's no news. I'm... So in order to, to counteract that and directly address it, I have a day of the week um, and we can make it more if you'd like, but I have a day of the week where I have on my calendar to reach out to all of my current active clients and give them an update. And even if it's an update that there's nothing new, nothing has happened, uh, we're still gonna talk, we're still gonna find out what, how you're feeling, you know, the emotional ups and downs, what's going on on your side. Um, this can be before listing and after listing while you're in the buying process. It's just important to stay in touch. Of course, you have my personal phone number and my email, you can always reach out to me, but I find that clients appreciate my proactivity in reaching out to them, letting them know what to expect, answering any questions that may have drifted up into their consciousness but not quite ready to uh, initiate an email. So communication is very important and uh, just making sure that the process goes smoothly. There are inevitably glitches, there are inevitably opportunities to renegotiate after the inspection or uh, if something happens, you know, there's a lease back, anything. Um, I really enjoy negotiating. My sister, actually, she's an attorney. She was the number one negotiator in her law school class. They had sort of a negotiation class and contest and um, she was phenomenal. And guess what, I negotiate the same way. And really, it's all about uh, creating a win-win scenario and finding what the other person's needs are. Oftentimes, we get locked in to just one variable. Often, it's price but there could be lots of other things that uh, the other party is interested in, whether it's their moving date, um, you know, having someone introduce the neighborhood, getting something changed in the yard, fencing off the pool, you know, whatever it is, there's often more than one variable. And if we can figure out what variables are important to us and what variables are important to them, then we can make the best combination of variables to make both parties walk away happier and more fulfilled, which makes the transaction more likely to stick. So, okay, so we talked about marketing, we talked about negotiating, we talked about communication, and we talked about social skills. Uh, the last thing that I'm just going to say is it's important to have uh, transactional skills as well. Uh, many realtors are very high on certain parts of their uh, personality profile that have to do with like sales and social activities, and then are a little bit weaker on sort of the accounting and the paperwork side. My feeling is that the better you know your paperwork, the better negotiator you're gonna be, the better deal you're going to get for your client. So like I said, you know, my sister is an attorney, my parents are both attorneys, my grandfather was a law school professor, my uncle was an attorney. So when it comes to paperwork and those details, I take it very seriously. And for a lot of people, it's not fun or exciting, it's certainly not glamorous, but that is an important key. And um, I take it seriously, my broker takes it seriously. Uh, we get the broker to review all the paperwork as a second set of eyes, just to make sure that everything is happening the way it should in compliance and with your best benefit. But to that end, I am also uh, very ethical. So if you're the type of person that is um, you know, wanting to bend the rules or fudge things or erase this date and put it on over here. Um, I'm not your huckleberry in that case. Uh, so kind of finding out where your uh, potential realtor lies in, in that area, either that they are strong on the paperwork detail orientation or they have an assistant or somebody else who can help with them with that is very important. So I hope this has been helpful in giving you some things to think about when you're evaluating what type of real estate agent you want to work with. 
hopefully if you're in the Seattle, King County, Snohomish County, anywhere up here area, I would love to be that person. Uh, if you are not in this area, then I hope this has been helpful to give you uh, an idea of what to look for. Uh, whether or not you're in the area, I would love to be a resource for you. I can certainly refer you to other folks that I would recommend if you're looking to buy or do a transaction elsewhere. I actually uh, do buy investment property out of state, so I know that can be a little bit tricky to find somebody good, but I'd be happy to um, work with you on that. And if there's ever anything that you can do or that I can do for you, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. I try to get all of my um, private messages and DMs and things. You can also text me, call me, email me, uh, take a look at my website, homeproassociates.com. We're on Facebook, we're on uh, Instagram, we're on YouTube, all over the place getting our messages out there, helping you be an informed consumer so you can be educated and make the best real estate decision for you. Again, I'm Emily Cressy and I am here to serve.